All right, everybody. Hello, and welcome to another Fantasy Grounds Unity game prep. And I'm David. I'll be with you for the next hour-ish or so. And I'm going to be working on a new Starfinder adventure called Junker's Delight. And this is uh, the first standalone adventure that was released. I believe it was released uh, this month or last month. And I have all of the subscriptions for Starfinder. So uh, with a subscription, you get a free PDF. So I'm basically going to be working out of the PDF. Here it is. And uh, this is what I do. Uh, I don't use any kind of parse programs, no scrapers, nothing like that. I do it the good old fashioned way and copy paste. And I cut and trim images out, resize them, etc. So I like to, uh, yeah, like to have a good time with that. So, anyways, welcome to another show. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to creating Junker's Delight. Uh, here you go. This is what the cover looks like. Kind of shrink it down for y'all a little bit. There you go. Junker's Delight by Jason Keeley and Misha Bushager, or Yeager, however you pronounce it. Apologies if I pronounced it wrong, which uh, I tend to do a lot with the English language. So, yeah, th so there probably will be some spoilers in here. So if you decide uh, you're going to play this or something, you may want to just <laughs> not watch or something, uh, because I'm going to be kind of reading this and kind of going over it so yeah basically you need to go to a place called kefak depot and it's sort of like a junk tourism place it's like the this is how i when i was reading junkers delight i see kefak depot as sort of like disney world and there's all kinds of beautiful hotels there's all kinds of places that you can go to to take trips out into the massive junkyard and here it is right here here's kefag De depot uh, as you can see there's some locations and today we're going to be working on the depot itself and kind of putting this uh starting to put this map together so yeah basically it's like disneyland of junkyards and you can take all kinds of tours and you know uh go out and go treasure hunting and stuff with tour guides. And uh, there's a lot of corruption in Kefak Depot. There's uh, there's no water. So the, the head guide, he brings in, he's called the water dealer. And he's the one that goes to the north. He gets all kinds of ice and melts it on the way down. And that's how the depot has water is through the water dealer. And he's like the richest, of course. Uh, and then there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of scientists. There's a lot of other treasure hunters that fake this stuff and plant it. So you're guaranteed on if you, you know, purchase a really expensive tour, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to find something and everything is fabricated. Everything is kind of planted, et cetera. So it's kind of, it's cool. There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of crime. There's gangs. Uh, but it's under control to a point. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's actually a pretty good adventure from what I've read so far. I'm really looking forward to running it. And uh, yeah, because I'm going to be running Starfinder for probably the next six-ish months or so. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, But this is broken up into... Uh, it's basically set up the same way that the adventure paths are set up. There's three chapters. Sometimes there's a fourth chapter. Uh, then there's also the uh, Kefak Depot Gazetteer, and then there's an adventure toolbox. So we'll kind of we'll kind of go to page fifty one already. That's where the depot is. So, and uh, there's I guess this is the the big bad guy at the end right here. I haven't read anything. Yeah, but his name is uh no Trulu. He looks like a Shobod. Yeah. Shobods have four forms. Look at all those weapons and stuff. So 
Yeah, there's the, the depot, depot with all of the locations, the information about the depot itself. So I'm gonna start working on this today. And uh, I actually kind of want to make some images as well. I want to take this. This is the water dealer here. This is what he looks like. And then I remember this art is in the core rule book, I think. And then the adventure toolbox has all kinds of stuff. Just like I mentioned, it's set up just like an adventure path book. And it has all kinds of new gear. So here's like junk gear. You can like make a junk drone or you could find one and it will, you know, kind of kind of get attached to you and it'll follow you around. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's all kinds of new like spikes and here's a, uh, a thing called a rubbish cannon. <laughs> There's a new uh, chassis for a vehicle. There's some new spells for Starfinder that are related to junk which is pretty cool. That's the one thing that I, I do love about Paizo products. They are supported so well. And I can't, I can't praise Paizo enough for that. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm new to Paizo products and stuff just within just when Starfinder started, what, four years ago. So I'm actually still fairly new to Paizo, but their products are, are amazing. They really are. I am on the, the Paizo bandwagon. That's for sure. Uh, they, they put all kinds of stuff in the toolbox. They got a, a, a new archetype. Uh, if you want to play a junk, junk omancer there's a junk omancer archetype and then you know there's prerequisites that you have to satisfy and then here are some things that you get at certain levels like second fourth and 18th and then here are fully fledged creatures or aliens as they're called in starfinder there's a drift phantom cr5 that looks pretty cool ah there we go junk golem he's on the cover actually yeah, he's pretty cool. He will definitely make an appearance in, in this adventure, I'm sure. The Faster Toad. Faster Toad. Yeah, look at that. That's a pretty creepy looking toad. Almost kind of looks like a dog, doesn't it? <clears throat> so, yeah, the so the way that they have the, the new standalone adventure uh, is pretty good. And there's another one coming out as well. I believe in a couple of months, but yeah, there's that junk golem. So, all right. So we are going to get started here now that I've kind of talked about the adventure a little bit. I'm actually really, like I said, I'm really looking forward to running this. So, all right. So I'm going to kind of put this to the side and I'm going to pull up my paint.net. And I use paint.net. I've been using it for about a decade, for the better part of a decade now. And it basically is a very basic generic Photoshop. I mean, Photoshop is the standard. I mean, it has all the bells, the whistles, the trinkets, the gadgets, everything. But paint.net is actually pretty good. It's a free program. You can go to, you can just do a google search for paint.net it's it's free you know there are a lot of scammers out there that try to get your money saying you got to pay for paint.net but you don't have to it is totally free and on the paint.net forms there is a is an extension uh form thread and there are hundreds and hundreds of extensions that you can get that are called uh effects and they'll go under all these different categories. And you can just download tons of these things. And I've, I've downloaded so many of these, and it has expanded on the program greatly. And I'm so glad that I actually took the time to, you know, check out the forms. And, uh, I mean, you can, you can add all this stuff. And, I mean, there's just tons of stuff. And it can do quite a bit of... It can even take, it can do quite a bit. It has a lot of features if you add all the extensions. And then also uh, you can actually take the PSD files from Photoshop and I actually installed a, conver a converter as well. So I can take a PSD file and paint.net will break it up into the different layers. It's really nice. And like I said, it's totally free. And for what I do, I would love to use Photoshop. I mean, I really would. 
but I don't I don't warrant the cost for for how much that I would use it. I mean, I just modify maps and stuff like that. But if it was if it was part of my job, then I would definitely invest into it. But it's it's just not. I mean, it just doesn't suit suit my needs. So that's why I've stayed with paint.net for for many years. And uh, it's it's a great little program and it's free. So, all right, so I've, I've taken some images here, as you can see from the PDF. I've kind of just kind of cropped these images and stuff, and I've put them into paint.net because I, I want to kind of modify all of these images uh, for my campaign. Now, I, I also do want to do a couple, another thing really quick, and I want to go to the... Uh, Gazetteer, and I want to see if there's any other images of Kefak Depot. Kefak Depot, I, I guess it's how it's called. But I, I definitely want to take this image. I, I do like this image here of the water dealer. And I'm going to basically alt print this. And I'm going to stick this into, uh, I'm going to create an image as well. And so I'm just going to copy paste that in there. So... Yeah, here we go. All right. I don't think there's anything else. I've already got this image. So, all right. That's it for now. I'm not going to do any of this stuff yet. Not until I get to the, uh, until I get to that point. So I'm going to kind of put my, my PDF back over here. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm good to go. So, uh, set this over here. Now, even though I have multiple monitors, there's so much going on. So, yeah, this is, I took the depot, art, and then the NPCs and stuff that are going to be in part one. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to start this week with uh, Kefik Depot. And that's pretty much what I want to do. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of take the PDF again. A lot, lots of switching around. When you're building a module, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're building your own module. So, all right. So part one is called pest control. So I, I want to take... Yeah, I want to take all of this information here and I want to start putting it into my Starfinder campaign. And I'm not going to make a, a an individual module for this. I'm I'm just going to go ahead and uh I'm just going to go ahead and put it into my Starfinder campaign that I have going already. So let's uh let's go to my campaign here. And I want to first I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some data in first. So I'm gonna go to my story. I don't know. I think I think I'm also going to uh I think I'm gonna turn on my mouse pointer. I like to have my I like to have my mouse pointer on so all of you can kind of see what's going on. You know what I mean? So there we go. I got my mouse my mouse pointer on. Everybody can now see what is going on. And uh, let's see. I've got my story journal here. What is this here? This is uh, just something from the core rule book that maybe Russell put in there. <laughs> All right. So let's see. I think this is, I think this may be the... This might actually be the wrong campaign that I have started, which is uh, unfortunate. So I am going to go ahead and open up a new, I got to, I got to open up a new campaign. I got to get back to the launcher. So glad that the return to launcher feature was added in Unity. Uh, let's see. I need to load a campaign. Okay, Starfinder beginner box set. I think. I think. 
I think it might be this. I think it might actually be the master one. Make sure I got all this other. So I'm going to go to the this one. We'll kind of take a as it's as it's loading up. I'm going to kind of take a look at this uh, PDF a little bit more while while we're loading up here. So the adventure summary is. The heroes will arrive at Kefek Depot, a settlement on Akaton, which is uh, in the Pact Worlds, before quickly coming to the aid of Riddle, a Yasaki, who makes a modest living guiding tours through the fields of outlandish junk and tangled scrap that litter the planet's surface. So it looks like Riddle is menaced by members of a local gang. Great low-level adventure hook. <laughs> seems to happen all the time and it looks like she's asking the heroes uh to find her latest client which is very 13 or vari 13 which is an android historian searching for important technology that they believe is nearby i'm thinking it that's probably in the junkyards So it looks like the heroes will discover that Vari 13 <laughs> has wandered into a vermin infested area of scrapped land vehicles. <laughs> oh, that's great. So predictable. I love it. So once rescued, Vari 13 informs the heroes that they've narrowed down the location of the Stellar Flare. Okay, so what is the Stellar Flare? And it's potentially groundbreaking research. I bet you the Stellar Flare is probably yeah, it is talked about up here in the first kind of event, couple paragraphs of the adventure. Yeah, there it is, Stellar Flare. Uh, and it's potentially groundbreaking research to somewhat beyond uh, the depot and the junk fields. So Riddle will hire the group investigate further warning them of two dangerous factions who a tribe of junk obsessed space goblins i knew they i knew they were coming in and a nest of uh akeshtis which the akeshtis are kind of like uh kind of like lizards i guess but the the space goblins remember a couple weeks ago on one of my last game prep streams uh yeah, that's that's actually kind of cool because I had a goblin junk, uh, sort of like a random encounter where they're going to be stowaways uh, on a ship, on our party ship. So I think that was like totally MacGyver. And I think that's going to work out perfect because they had a junk cycle that they stowed onto the ship. And they need parts for this junk cycle. So I guess they're going to need like a flux capacitor or something like that. I don't know, whatever. And uh, so that's going to work out kind of perfect, actually. So moving on, the outer junk fields sees little tourism. And also, if you folks have any questions, feel free to ask them in chat. And then once I get to a stopping point, I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. Uh, let's see. So it seems like the party's going to have to find the Stellar Flare. And then they over here murk a Space Goblin and an Akeshti squabbling over the best way to bring peace over their two factions. That's not what the party wants. The party wants them to kill each other off. That's what they want. So, so the Stellar Flare is something big because it looks like the Goblins tried to enter it. It activated its security system. Hmm. So before the inner, the heroes can enter the stellar flare, the leaders of the two junk field factions demand that the heroes surrender. So I'm guessing all hell will break loose. Lots of goblins and Akeshtis will die. And uh, then the players, after killing everyone, going full murder, can enter the crowd. Starship. <laughs> uh, I love reading adventures. I kind of, I, I love doing this. 
All right. So inside there's rusted security robots, malfunctioning laser turrets. Nice. New, uh, ooh. Some of the crew has risen as incorporeal ghosts to haunt trespassers. Nice. And then eventually the heroes reach the central research lab that houses the drift power prototype, but it's guarded by a strange creature composed of energy wrenched directly from the drift. So the drift is sort of like a parallel plane that allows you to travel quickly from point A to point B instead of how we humans nowadays only have, well, we had the space shuttle. We don't have anything now. We just got SpaceX little modules so it would take basically an eternity to go from one planet to another planet but with the drift it allows you to go from point a to point b sort of like i, I guess it would act sort of like a wormhole and it would just take you in a very short amount of time from planet a to planet b or galaxy a to galaxy b or whatever so that's how the drift, from what I remember reading about the drift. So I still need to touch up on my Starfinder. It's been a couple years since I've played it. So, all right. So when the heroes over overcome the obstacle until a riddle of their success, she warns them that a showbot crime boss named a Trulu. Okay, that was that guy that was up here. Or the Trulu. He was at the end of the adventure right before the uh, adventurer's toolbox. So it looks like he's the big baddie at the end. And uh, he wants it for himself. So he's going to try to take it from the party, I'm sure. And he wants that technology. So the heroes are going to have to quickly build defenses from the Starship security system and defend themselves from an all-out assault by the greedy crime boss and his vicious gang. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool adventure. This is a great this is an absolutely great starting adventure. I love the story. Uh, yeah, this is going to be fun. So go ahead and ask any questions, folks, if you feel like asking any questions. So I'm going to start taking some of this content here. I want to see if I can copy paste it all in order. No, I can't. Okay, so I'm just going to go down here to the bottom. And I want to start entering data so yes this is my campaign very good all right so let's go to my adventures i got a player's reference i've got uh, what else do i have i've got gm's reference which is blank i knew i added stuff to that there's a solo adventure for, okay there's steel talons adventure i did that with pathfinder i didn't do that with starfinder Okay, so I am going to have to create Junker's Delight. I always put it in uh, kind of brackets because it always by default puts it up. Yeah. Junker's Delight. Sounds like a, uh, doesn't that sound like a real rich dessert or something like that? <laughs> Yes, uh, what is the... Ooh, that sounds like a soup, maybe. Uh, yes, uh, waiter or waitress. What is the soup du jour today? Oh, it's Junker's Delight. <laughs> oh, too good. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue to, uh, copy-paste our, our content into... <laughs> Oh, this is so good. All right. And I am continuing to copy paste. I'm not going to keep moving the PDF over every time I grab something. So, All right. this is a. Uh, it's coming along good. They're, the plan's coming together. I love it. What did the, what did, what is it? Hannibal from the A-Team says, I love it when a plan comes together. All right. 
commences it. All right, now I like to format everything and I, I kind of go backwards and I, I just kind of work my, just work my way up, so. So now, I don't think that's a, anyway, let's see. Here is, all right. So it looks like, hold on, I think it kind of messed up on the paste here. No, yeah, it did. Huh, that's cool. That's no problem. All right, so I don't need this. And to break the lines, you just, you know, highlight the paragraph and hit Control J. And it will, so you don't have to go to the end of each line and hit backspace to create paragraphs. Just highlight Control J and uh, it will save you a ton of time. So I'm gonna use my formatting. What is, what is going on here? Okay, I got that highlighted. Okay, I, I, I think I probably didn't have that. All right, so this is a little sidebar. All right, so this is a paragraph here. I'm going to control J that. All right, so this is chat that you're going to tell your player. So I go into my formatting and I create paragraphs. So. And I just, I just do this. I just work my way up to where by the time I, I work my way up to the top of the page, I'm basically done. So and then I kind of, I like to edit things as I go. So, All right. and I like to, I like to bold names and I like to bold locations because it's, I've mentioned this before. It's, it's, it pops out at you and it, and it kind of gets your attention and it kind of like, any kind of DC for a, for a skill check or anything like that, I always highlight it because it, you know, when I see that it gets my attention, I'm like, okay, I have to do a skill check here for the players. So then I'll kind of read a little bit more around it. So that's, that's how I kind of kind of do things, which, uh, yeah, not too bad. All right. Right, so, oh wow. This is all the way up here. That's a big paragraph. Yeah, so it may mess up my bold. I may have to go back and redo the bold. I did, I do. So anytime you adjust it, you'll have to go back in and kind of rebold that. So but it's not a problem. So, looks like this is our first part called Pest Control. And I'll bold that. I'll put a space there. And now we're kind of in the, uh, the adventure summary that I was just kind of checking out, reading with everyone. So what do you folks think in the chat from what you've heard? Sounds like a pretty... Pretty fun adventure, doesn't it? You got some factions, you've got tourism, you've got the water boss. You got all kinds of stuff going on. Nice uh nice adventure actually. So I'm having a, having a problem finding my paragraph. So I need to find it up to the outer junk fields. I don't see it. So I think there might've been some text left out, but that's no problem. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
delete that. Delete that. I'm going to kind of put that there. I'm going to fold that. Okay. All right, so this is the adventure summary. So I have down to here before the heroes can enter. So it looks like there's an issue with grabbing the first, second, and third paragraphs. So I'll put those in there now. So this is the first paragraph. That is the second paragraph. And this is the third paragraph that I'm going to sneak in here. And there we go. I need to put a period there. So there we go. That is the adventure summary. And then this is sort of like the synopsis of the entire adventure, which I, I didn't go over with all of you yet. And then I'll bold this up top. Now we got a ooh, wrong one, Dave. <laughs> oh, this is good. Oh my goodness. I just keep butchering this. You got to bear with me. This is my first time ever using the software. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that when I just continue to butcher things. So, all right, let's uh, take some questions. Yes, uh, welcome. Hey, what's up, J Rock? You'd eat the uh, the Junkers Delight soup. Yeah, I'd, I'd try it to. It sounds like it would be uh, sort of like a surprise. You know, you don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know what vegetables you're gonna get. You don't know what kind of meat you're gonna get. Have the mystery meat. Yeah, Junkers Delight. I would try it. Probably be pretty good. Playman six one six over on YouTube. How's it going? Control J is a lifesaver. That is for sure. All right, that's all the uh, comments and questions that I see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of move on. So, all right, and then we're down to part one: pest control. So I've already done. So we we know that we gotta find the parties. Gotta they're gonna have to go into the stellar flare and get that that drift engine prototype. I remember there was a drift engine prototype. So, yeah, that's right. It looks really good. I mean, just what five minutes of copy pasting. I mean, our adventure looks really good. It looks like something that you get out of the out of the store, right? I mean, it looks looks really good. All right. So part one is the pest control. So I think I'm I'm good there. I think I've got enough here to get going. Now I need to create. Before I get too far ahead, I want to kind of add some information on the depot, right? So I want to go back to the depot, which I think was on page 55 of the PDF. So let's see. Yes, there it is right there, Kefak Depot. So I, I, I want to add this information also, and I'm going to add that in the adventure at the beginning because that's where the players are going. So there's no need to, you know, not have that information. So I guess I'll, I'll just kind of, I'll make, and in fact, I think I'll keep that, and I think I'll put that between the adventure summary and part one. So I'm just I'm just gonna name this Kefag Depot, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna bold it and make this a a heading. Oh my goodness, I'm missing all over the place. What is going on? All right, so I need to. All right, that's good. So now I want to take all this all of this info and put it into. Kefag Depot, right? So first, I need my map. And uh, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to save this. 
I'm gonna save it as a JPEG and I'm gonna call this Cafe Depot. And I'm gonna save it to my desktop. In fact, I think I might make a, instead of my, yeah, here it is right here. I've already got a Junkers Delight folder from downloading everything. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put Kefic Depot in here as an image. So we're good to go. And then I wanna go ahead and import this into my assets library, which assets are in the lower right-hand corner. There's all kinds of tutorials in our Unity playlist as well that show you how to do all this stuff. So feel free to check out all of those uh, videos. Now, I also wanna open up another folder because I wanna get back into my Starfinder, my Adventures Delight, my Junkers Delight, and I want to make a copy of this and I want to paste it inside of this folder. And there is my uh, Kefic Depot. So I want to close that out. I want to refresh uh, the assets folder. And now my Kefic Depot image is there. Okay, cool. Now I want to, I want to create an image record. And uh, I've sent it now to, by doing that, you send this over to the sidebar button so you can access this and you know right click it and share it with your players and stuff so all right that's cool i'm gonna leave that unlocked i'm gonna close that out now i want to go into my images and uh, i'm just gonna type in depot and it'll show up there it is so all i'm gonna do is just drag drag and drop this down there so now i have easy access to my Cafe depot so one inch is a hundred yards. Wow, that's uh, that's a pretty, pretty big junkyard. I mean, for a hundred yards for every inch, I mean that's that's huge. So I mean, we could, I could make, uh, I mean, I could, I could give it a try real quick. I'll, I'll make a, uh, I'll make a grid for a hundred yards. So let's uh, right click. We'll go to layers. We'll set a grid and I'll do this to the best of my ability. It's where I'm going to try to do about an inch grid. All right. So I think that that might be about an inch grid there. It's kind of, I want to zoom out because I want to get this grid lined up exactly to where I don't, I don't think that's going to happen because you can see at the top let's see let's just kind of shrink it down a little bit more until I can actually get it to line up correctly I think that might be about good right there all right, so now what I want to do is I want to go into my grid in the upper right hand corner and I want to do a couple things. The first thing I want to do is I want to kind of nudge this over because I, I want to line it up a little bit better and I'm just going to use the nudge tool and there you go. Just with a simple couple clicks, I've got this thing lined up from left to right. Now I've got this thing lined up from top to bottom, which is nice. Now my grid, that's too bright. I don't like a real bright grid. So I am going to just kind of, I'm just going to basically make this invisible because it's still going to show up if I, you know, if I go to try to, you know, you know, do any kind of like measurement. So remember, this is 100 yards for every grid. So I wanna go back into my grid and I wanna change the suffix to yards, right? And I wanna change distance multiplier from five to 100. So now we'll get an accurate measurement of, yeah, of our grid. So we need to go back into, into play mode. So from this area, this is the arena. So to go from the arena, which is here, to the monarch, which is here, which the Monarch, I believe, is the Ritzy Hotel. It's, yeah, there you go. It's 600 yards. So now we have an accurate unit of measurement between locations. 
And I, and I, like I said, I went ahead and I got rid of the, the, the grid's still there. It's just that I, the transparency, I just got rid of it. So, so that's nice. So this whole map is what? 2,000 yards. Hey, that, that, that sounds pretty good. And this is just a depot, but the, the junk lands, they expand out so much further than what this map shows. I remember, I remember reading that. So, okay, cool. So we've actually got our, our map accurate. So now if the players want to get on there onto the map, because a lot of players like to do measurements and stuff. Now our players can actually figure out how, how, you know, how, how, Far is it from this place to this place? So, all right. I'm glad. I'm glad that I did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that map up, and I think I'll keep it open because I'm gonna pin some locations on here. I don't think every single location has content, but I I'm pretty sure that um, a lot of them do. So I'm just gonna right click and minimize that and put my button over to the side. I always like to put my buttons up at the top so I can, but there's no right or wrong way, right? You can put the buttons anywhere you want. So now what I wanna do is I kind of wanna put the, just the information of Kefag Depot. All right which is this column of data. So there we go. All right, this is coming together. This is gonna to be very, I, I love an, an organized module. I love organized modules. That's why I like to, to do it the way that I like to do it because I'm the one running the game, right? All right, so we got three paragraphs of information. Right, so I will go ahead and I'll bold that. I'm not going to make that a header, but I'm going to bold it. So maximum item level, you can get eighth level magic items here. Qualities of the town is notorious. I can see that. The government uh, is a plutocracy, I believe. Isn't a plutocracy the wealth, the wealthy run the show? I believe that's what a... Plutocracy is. I mean, if anybody can, if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me in the uh, chat. But I think that's what a plutocracy is. All right. I think I might go ahead and get rid of that. So, yeah, it's a chaotic neutral resort town, 150,000 population. There's all the other information. Very nice. Turned out nice. Okay. So now. Uh, I'm going to open up the image, seeing that I have those. The next thing that's on the depot are the locales or the locations. And then there are also some personalities like the water dealer, Zet family holdings, service tunnels, etc. So let's, uh, before I start entering that data, let's go ahead and Go to the questions, see if anybody's got any questions, which uh, no one does. Hey, Lone Jedi, good to see you. Hey, Bell, how's it going? Hope everybody's uh, getting ready to have a great weekend of gaming this weekend. All right, so I'm gonna basically start doing these. And these I'm actually gonna put on their own individual journal page or story page that way I can I can pin them to the map so all right so this is what I'm gonna do make sure I have my map open kind of gonna kind of move that that way so where are we gonna here we go I'm gonna use the mouse button here we go you can use the mouse button to move the map around just hold down the middle mouse button or the, I'm sorry, the scroll button, or you can use the navigation down there as well. All right, so I'm gonna kinda, kinda just put this aside. I need to make a couple of stories. So I'm gonna put this over here. The first one is called Adventures in Junk. So I'm just gonna call this Adventures 
then junk all right i'm gonna paste that data in there and then i'm gonna make that a, what is going on i know i'm clicking in this all right adventures and junk and then this is all one so now where is adventures and junk on the map so i'm gonna kind of put this to the side Adventures in Junk is locate is location number two, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is just take this and drag and drop this uh, a little piezo symbol and drag and drop that right onto number two. And you can see, hey, there is a pin. And then when you can click on it, it has everything you need to know about Adventures in Junk. And if you want to, if there's no information that, you know, you're players would be able to meta game you can just right click and then you can share this and then you know maybe because in starfinder there is technology and your players will probably end up having data pads and stuff and they can just basically download this kefac depot map into their data pad and then you can basically just uh, kind of share all these links and your players can open up the kefac depot map and then they can go ahead and open up each location and get a little bit of information. But if there is information that you don't want them to see, then I would recommend making one shareable so the players can kind of see what is going on with the adventures and junk. And then we could create another pin and then we can keep that just for your eyes only as, or my eyes only as a DM. So we'll kind of, uh, Kind of go over each one of these just to make sure that because i do like to do that i'll share links and then i'll keep things private so let's see the various hotels and resorts that line the skirts which i believe the skirt is like where all of the locations are and stuff uh, the second most common occupation is a tour guide so it doesn't look like there is anything that the players wouldn't find out anyway. So I'm just going to kind of, this is Riddle. This is where the players are going to meet Riddle anyway. And then she's going to tell them about, you know, Very 13 or Vari 13, whatever that bo uh, robot's name was that was looking for the prototype drift engine. Yeah, so we can just leave this. So basically we'll just kind of right click this and then we'll make this link, uh, make this link shareable. So you see it, it went from a red pin to a green pin. Green means that players can see it. So, all right, so we're done with uh, adventures and junk. Let's go to the next one, which is the arena. So it looks like they got like gladiator combat and stuff in this game. So that would be a pretty cool event. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's anything involving it. I'm sure there probably is. So let's uh, make another journal called the arena. And then I'll paste all of this information in here. And it looks like we have three paragraphs that we need to kind of break. All right. So we are good there. Goodness gracious. All right. So this is a large oval building towering 12 stories. Wow, that's that's huge. 100,000 people capacity. Oh, wow, that's cool. All right. Concession stand shops are always open. Wow. So it doesn't look like any of this information is going to be private. Right. So we'll go ahead and we'll... We'll go ahead and we'll pin this on. Uh, the arena is location number one. So we'll take this pin, move it over by it one, and then I'll make this link shareable so all the players can see it. All right. So now we have the concert hall at Carnival. That's one thing that I'd like to do in my lifetime. Go to the Caribbean and go to Carnival. That would be awesome. Google it if you don't know what it is. Uh, I'm sure that's probably adults for adults, youngins. <laughs> Concert hall at Carnival. 
Right. So this is where all the finest actors on acting go. Nice. It so looks like we've got one big giant paragraph. At the carnival. All right, carnival, a hotel resort managed by Zelp. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this page 53. I don't like that in my. So I will bold his name because I like to bold names and locations. All right. Smaller than the arena, but still large enough to satisfy solo crowds, which is good. Got VIP boxes, uh, all kinds of stuff. All right. So it looks like this can all be public as well. So I'll just kind of set this to the side. And it looks like Carnival is number three. And then I will also make this a public shareable link. The Junkfield Museum. So where is the Junkfield Museum? Hmm, doesn't say. What is this got a different name? And Junkfield Museum. Where's the Junkfield Museum? I don't see it on here. So maybe it's in another. Service tunnels are not on there either. So that's not. Yeah, so there's really not a lot of information about these uh, locations. Hmm. I wish the I wish the gazetteer had a little bit more information. Kind of a little, kind of a little lackluster for me with uh, information because it only talks about the arena. Adventures and Junk, and the Carnival. It only talks about those three areas, so. So I think, let's see. Uh, my Varden Sphere, welcome, hello to you. Welcome. All right, so I think I'm gonna do this last, let's do this last, last couple locations they're they're not on the map itself so uh this is but that's not a problem it's about the junk field museum oh it's at the necro palace okay so the i do remember there is a necro palace and there it is right there the Necro Palace is, is uh, location number four. Okay. That's good. At the Necro Palace. All right. Whoa. Just kind of edit this really quick. There's a couple of paragraphs. Looks like there's a few paragraphs on this. There's one, and then there's two, kind of open this, hold down control and just resize it that way. All right. Tech Depot, all right. So it looks like Dr. Jolonga Ball, which is a human female envoy leads the museum. So I will bold her name and any other names in here, which I don't see. So let's go ahead and add this pin to location number four. And it is right here and it doesn't have any kind of information that doesn't need to be hidden so I'll, I'll make that public for right and then we'll take the last one called the service tunnels 
it was kind of, it was nice uh, reading about the service tunnels. I, I like that. All right. That's uh, what is going on today with my copy pasting abilities are not doing too good today, folks. I've been sick the last week, so I haven't haven't really been feeling well either. So it's not been not been fun. All right, so there we go. All right. So I kind of put the service tunnels off to the side. I kind of put that, that pin over here to the side. And I won't make that visible because it's uh, kind of talks about it's a tunnel system that basically connects all of the, the resorts together and that's how they get all of their water, their supplies, the garbage, everything through this tunnel system. And then there's a, you know, talks about a, like a show bod, the forum guys, they have a, a population that lives down there as well. So, so I kind of put that, I kind of put that to the side. In fact, I'll put that on here so I can see it and remember it. So, I don't see anything. This is service tunnels here. So there's nothing. Yeah, there's the water dealer, the monarch. Um, yeah, there's a couple more. I've got a couple more things, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm to a good stopping point today. So we'll finish up Kefak Depot next week and we'll continue on with uh, part one of the adventure, which is pest control. So uh, there's a little battle map for this that I've already, I've already cropped out inside of my paint.net. So as you can see, here's everything that I need for chapter one. There's a piece of art. There's the, uh, the first event. There's the map for that. So, and then here's all the NPCs and cause I like to have all the images so I can, so I can basically show all my players. And I like these, these gritty maps I, I actually like these that's a that's a perfect fit for this adventure you know not to have no i mean i love beautiful shiny maps but just to have these dark gritty types of maps this is this is like a nice little feature so all right let's go ahead and uh, take a couple more questions see if we have any and if not this is where i will pause for this week and continue next week so I don't see any other questions, so I'll do a final call if anyone has any questions. And uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, I had no, no stream last week. Um, I will be back next week. So, And then don't forget to join me here in another hour for Fantasy Grounds Fridays. And I'll be going over, well, actually, I'm going to be checking out. I'm going to be taking a first look at the new Savage Worlds Pathfinder rule set. So uh, I'll be doing that in another hour. So. All right. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I'll see everyone next week at 3 p.m. Eastern. Bring your questions. And we'll continue on with creating the Junkers Delight adventure. So thanks a lot, everybody, for watching. And until next week, happy gaming. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.